Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my uh, dear students and friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in, in India. And as you know this course which is going on is the Swam lecture series and the title is Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. So in this uh, lecture we will consider in more details about uh, the concepts of how the pricing of options are done and the main focus would be on Black-Scholes model. But before that we will uh, simply consider the general, uh, very general notions and the concepts of what is a winner process, what is a generalized winner process, what is a Ito's lemma and the Ito's process and how these things can be utilized in order to find the pricing of the options. And obviously before that we will discuss about the general properties of the uh, stock prices. And if you, if you remember in the last class, we were discussing about the very simple concept of Brownian motion Marco process and how they can be utilized to find out the prices of the stocks. And I did mention that uh, there, is a, there is a relationship between the continuous compounding interest rate and how uh, the properties of stock prices really hmm, gives you the general idea that the continuous compounding interest rate uh, can be utilized. So this is the 28th lecture in, in the area of investment analysis and portfolio management. The main focus or lecture title would be or the main focus would be winner process and Ito's lemma and the corresponding concepts. While the lecture descriptions were the keywords, so as to say, we will consider the Wiener process, the generalized Wiener process, the Ito process, a very simple concept of Monte Carlo simulation, the Ito's lemma and how the Taylor series expansions are utilized to derive the results and finally the Black-Scholes model. And before that obviously when we are discussing the Black-Scholes model, we will consider the general assumptions and what they mean in a very simplistic uh, way. Now consider uh, uh, a variable z which follows a Wiener process and uh, if you remember uh, we were mentioning in the last class about the concepts of Poisson uh, process the concept and I did give the example of the Poisson process and the exponential distribution and based on that we, we discussed this would be coming up later also. Maybe, maybe not in, in this lecture or uh, in, in this course, but generally in the next course related to more of emphasis on risk management. So the main assumptions or the main concepts would be that as you consider the, the random variable z, uh, then what, what is important to remember is that rather than the, the properties of z we will be only rather than concentrating the, the properties of the differences of the z's uh, which are there. So in the last class when we were discussing I drew four different graphs um, and I did mention it was getting a little bit cluttered but uh, hope I was able to explain that for any financial uh, series we will consider point one the mean value and the variances are fixed and in the y axis for all the four graphs in the y axis we considered the value of the financial time series and in the x axis we, we analyzed or, or, or wrote down uh, the time and the time was Im Im important to note down because we said that you should basically consider the time difference between each unit to be as small as possible. Infinite small um, uh, values, the differences. 
now and in the same way if we um, in the second graph it was basically the mean value was uh, fixed and the the variances was changing uh, it can either increase or decrease in the third it was basically the mean value was changing the variance was fixed again and the variance uh, mean value changing means it can either increase or decrease and in the last uh, graph it was both of them was value was changing that means both the mean value can increase decrease as well as the variance can increase decrease and the reason why i discussed that was that was the fact that as you consider the time difference to be very small uh, there the variance would be additive nothing to do with the standard deviation and we be, will be utilizing that concept later on for the discussions and few prob simple problems so the change of delta z so if we draw what is now important to note that rather than have z measured along the y axis which is this axis which i am drawing and you have the time along the x axis we are more, more interested to measure the value of delta z along the y axis now why it will be important for delta z it will become uh, very evident when we consider the different co concepts of, uh, of, of we, we have already considered um, the concepts of forecasting and time series which are uh, very um, intrin intrinsically and very um, uh, thoroughly utilized in, in uh, the study of um, financial time series and for basically for finding out how the stock prices vary i am only talking about the stock financial assets and how they can the values of return total return or rate of return uh, which was basically capital r or small r can be utilized for our studies so the change of delta z during a very small interval of time as you mentioned is given by it's basically dependent on two factors one is a uh, 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 standard normal deviate its it realized values and another thing was basically the time difference delta t and if you remember we mentioned that as variance was dependent on time hence the concept of trying to find out the standard deviation would be dependent on on uh, the square root of time which we have so so the change in del the of uh, the change delta z not change of delta z is change delta z during a small interval of time delta t would be dependent let me as i mentioned on epsilon where epsilon has a distribution of standard normal and also on the time which i mentioned was delta t so the square root of that now the question would be how would you basically find it out so consider time difference as 0.001 or 0.1 whatever it is and the units let us not be too much bothered about the units and you want to basically find out how del delta z behaves so what you would do is that you would basically generate the standard normal deviate get the realized values of epsilon so epsilon 1 epsilon 2 that means with the suffix that would be generated and that would be multiplied by delta t square root and you will basically get the different values of delta z 1 delta z 2 so on and so forth so what is is uh, important is that given z1 z1 is basically i am not talking about delta z1 is uh, z1 which is the initial value or consider z0 you will basically have the time differences and based on that you will find out delta z1 so delta z1 would basically be so you have z0 and delta z would basically be one would be would be the difference of z1 minus z0 so z0 being known so i'll highlight it as it is known it will be circled it's green in color and this delta z1 would basically be uh, uh, generated considering you have delta t square root of that uh, 
and the realized value which you will have for epsilon will be epsilon 1 depending on, on the first realized values which you have. So, once it is obtained delta z 1 would be given by z naught. So, delta z 1 is known. So, the, with these z naught and delta z 1 being known the fact which is not known would be z 1. So, z 1 will be given by the sum of z naught plus uh, delta z 1 and delta z 1 can be positive or negative because when you generate from the standard normal deviate with the mean value of 0 and the, the variance of standard deviation as 1 the actual actual realized value can be from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, you keep generating and say, say for example, after you find out z 1 you can find out z 2 by generating the next realized value which will be delta z 2 and continue doing this in, in this manner. The values of de delta z for any two differences that is non overlapping time periods uh, would be independent. So, whatever the values which you get. So, independent means as you are generating from the standard normal deviate which is IID inde independently and identically distributed you will get the values of, of the delta z and uh, they ob obviously would also be independent because del delta t is fixed and the realized values would be generated accordingly. So, hence it will follow two important things. So, the expected value of delta z would be 0 and the variance of delta z will be given by delta t. So, obviously that would be very immediately and simply evident because the variance of epsilon is 1. So, the variance of delta z is only dependent on the variance of delta t which would be known depending on what values of delta t which we took. So, in that case we will say z not delta z, z would be Markov pro, uh, 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 simple Markov process. So, if I am drawing the value of delta z only, so consider I will mark it with the red color. So, I am basically finding out delta z, I am marking and the, the time difference delta t here. So, the val the, the, the distribution or the values of delta z would be looking like this. So, here the average value is 0 and the variance which will you will have depending on delta t is fixed it will be a constant value. So, remember it is to do with delta z not z. And if we mark uh, the z, it will be a Markov process as already mentioned by me about few minutes back. So, I will mark the, this is delta z would follow a Markov process. So, that will be a, the simple Wiener process uh, properties. So, in this case all things are not known. So, once we know z naught it can be found out and you can plot the values of z for different time periods uh, and, and then have a graph which, which I have drawn here is basically delta z along the y axis it can be placed with z and you can plot how z looks like. Now, in case so consider the time frame is given like this. So, let me draw. So, consider the time frame is, is here. This is equal to small t is equal to 0. This is equal to small t is equal to capital T. You have, let me use the color. Okay. You have z naught and the time frames are slowly broken down to small infinite time differences here. So, they are not equally spaced I am drawing a little bit fast. So, please excuse me for this. So, each of them 
each of these time differences are equal and that is equal to delta t and the number of such differences which you have from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to capital T is n. So, n capital N. So, capital N multiplied by delta t would give you the total differences. So, here what, what is meant by capital T is equal to n into delta t. So, in that case the expected value of the differences between z capital T and z 0 would also be 0 because uh, the average value fluctuating as it changes the expected value of the differences would, would also be 0 which means that if I take snapshots they would be different type of movement of the differences of delta capital T minus delta 0, but we take the expected value it would come out to be the value of 0 that is point 1. Point number 2 is that we already know from the, the, the last discussion in slide number 5 that the variance of delta z is delta t. So, if you basically find out the, the variance of, of the difference between uh, z t and, and z naught. So, z t minus z naught is actually the number of, of um, such infinite time differences multiplied by the time differences which you have which is z, z, uh, t is equal to n into uh, delta t so, small t. So, if I find out the variances, variances comes out to be t. So, longer you go t value increases obviously that would mean the variances of the differences would in increase, but the expected value remains the same. So, if you want to have a look that how uh, the variances and the, and the expected value would change. So, let us go back to the second diagram which we had drawn. The second diagram was that the expected I am I am drawing the differences of uh, z capital T minus z naught if I am drawing it along the y axis the mean value remains 0 which is the first bullet point I am again highlighting and the variances would ex explode in the sense it will increase as it is depend as it is equal to t. So, further you go it will basically increase. So, if I am able to draw and 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 give you a picture about that. So, here you have y axis I am not mentioning anything uh, because I have been repeating time and again I am not mentioning what I am uh, measuring along y axis that is very obvious and this is the time. So, as the, the fluctuation occurs so I uh, let me draw the fluctuations with different colors. is the first one these are snapshots. So, if I look at the variances and try to draw they would be like this the mean value is 0 and the variances keep increasing. So, this is the mean value, mean value is basically the x axis, so, let me extend it as uh, dictated by the assumptions which we have taken. So, this is I have tried to draw it uh, uh, considering we are measuring z along y and t along x. And the drift here which is basically the average fluctuations which is happening for the mean value is constant. So, so actually delta z would be measured here, but here uh, act and in this graph you are measuring z only. So, this is the drift and what is important to know is that if we zoom in more and try to find out the, the fluctuations of z for the Wiener process it will look like this. So, as say for example, you have a microscope and you are going more into the depth and check 
how the fluctuations occur. So, initially they will look like smooth, but as you basically zoom in it will become more, more jagged. So, consider that you are looking at the, the sea line, uh, sea uh, shore line for any country consider India, it looks very smooth, but as you start uh, zooming in they would basically the contours, the different type of, of paths the seashore follows would be much more evident. So, this is exactly what I have tried to draw it here and again remembering the expected value is constant. And then again a little bit more zooming in to check the graph would look, look like this is it's just a theoretical way I have trying to explain the how the overall uh, variations would look like uh, considering the Wiener process. This is the general simple Wiener process. So, a generalized Wiener process let us come to the more detailed definitions of the generalized Wiener process consider we have uh, just gone through the simplistic assumptions of the Wiener process. A Wiener process has a drift rate that is the average rate change per unit time which is 0 which we have been highlighting time and again. The drift rate of 0 means that the expected value of z at any future time is equal to its current value. So, that means the differences if I consider the differences which will give me how z is changing it comes out to be 0 as, as already mentioned. So, the drift rate of 0 would actually mean the same thing which was drawn in the diagram and was also discussed as one of the important uh, assumptions when I drew the time frame capital T uh, being broken down into small delta T time units and there were a capital N number of such small units. The variance rate is 1, the variance rate of 1 means that the variance of changes in z in time interval of, of length t would equal t. So, as you go down it will increase as I have just uh, noted it down or tried to illustrate it in the diagram which I drew. Now, what happens to this was the Wiener process. So, what extra things we bring for the generalized Wiener process. So, these are the things a generalized Wiener process for a variable x. So, whether x you consider or z is immaterial, but I am basically mentioning the variable as x can be defined defined in terms of a Wiener process which was delta z dz delta z uh, they would basically in the simplistic sense del z dz and all these things uh, mean the same. Even though if you go into, into actual theory uh, they would um, have a different implication considering that as you make delta smaller and smaller it becomes the, part, the rate of change which is dy dx. So, uh, a generalized Wiener process would consider of two terms. Term 1 is basically the average rate and term 2 is basically coming from the Wiener process. So, the part dz or generally what we have been talking about delta z is coming from the Wiener process. So, for this we know that the Wiener process being is equal to epsilon and this is delta t and we also know I am I am writing it down time and again in order to make things uh, clear, uh, crystal clear at each and every stage. So, you can generate from the standard normal deviate and multiply by square root of delta t and do it accordingly. Now, there are terms coming here point 1 is basically b is the factor or the variable which multiplies and finds out that how does the Wiener process change. So, if b is 1, so obviously the second term would be exactly equal, second term means this term. The second term for b is equal to 1 is exactly the Wiener process. And in the Wiener process we, we said time and again in the last uh, slide 
that the drift was basically the expected value was 0. But now for the generalized Wiener process, we are considering that it will be multiplied depending on two terms. Number one is that time difference which is delta t which is noted down here as dt multiplied by the factor a. So, if, if the first term a delta dt implies that x has an expected drift which was not there in the Wiener process and the rate is a per unit time whatever the time being. If b del dz is not there then we would basically have the process where the variance uh, does not uh, change and the value of uh, variance means the it is not coming from the Wiener process as such and the and the initial and final value initial and the next value would be given by the equation which is x is equal to x naught plus a t where x naught is the initial value. Uh, for the generalized Wiener process and a t would basically be the factors multiplying which will give you the change in the value of x per incremental time. Where x naught is the value of x at time t is equal to 0 when you start measuring or finding out the values. Now, if, if the second term which if we consider, so as I mentioned there are two terms, one is the multiplicative factor b and one is basically the Wiener process. So, b dz or delta z implies the variability in x. First one actually was related to the expected value. So, average variance first moment, second moment as per the concept of, of statistics. So, this, this was basically coming, uh, the first term was giving you some idea about the expected drift rate, while the second term implies the variability or the so called volatility. So, the amount of noise because as the variability will be we consider the amount of noise and we have considered the those concepts if you remember in the area of kappa model the the risk or the variations which are coming into the market one is with the white noise which you cannot control systematic risk and the unsystematic risk concepts the amount of noise is given by b times the wiener process which we already known so if i write down the for the generalized Wiener process d x is equal to the multiplicative factor a and remember here a is considered as constant not dependent on time multiplied by d t plus b again is the factor which is coming to have an effect on the white noise again b is independent of t and also x that means from where it is starting multiplied by dz so that becomes a into delta t plus b into epsilon into dt so i am writing dt taking the square root but Technically, it should be not d but delta. So, actually, the formula would be here del x, a generalized Wiener process, is equal to a into del t plus b epsilon del t. Now, it should be remembered which I have already mentioned, but I will still highlight that A which is highlighted in yellow and B which is highlighted in, in, in yellow are constant not dependent on either x or t. So, the question would come out uh, come up from your side is that how do you measure it? It is very simple based on the historical data you will have A and B and delta t is fixed by you 
So, and as you generate epsilon from the standard normal deviate, you will keep multiplying and find out the values of Z, capital Z1, capital Z2, capital Z3, so on and so forth, which would be the, which would be the second term and once A is already assumed, A into delta T will give you the first term. So, addition of that step by step, you can find out the each and every values of, of delta z, uh, delta x and how delta x would be known, uh, uh, given delta x is known, you can find out x 1, x 2, x 3 provided x naught which is at time t is equal to 0 is assumed and known to you. So, once we find out and write the formula. this becomes too dark. So, delta x is equal to a into delta t into b into epsilon into square root of delta t, where epsilon is uh, standard normal deviate. This would imply the following. If I want to take the expected value, obviously we have assumed uh, the the, the values of expected value of the second term does not remain, because on an average as I keep generating epsilon, the expected value as per the standard normal deviate is 0, which would mean that whatever terms you multiply, whether b or delta t whatever, because the expected value of epsilon is 0, so the second term would not be there. Hence, every all the, the corresponding expected value of x would be coming from the first term which is the drift. So, if a and delta t are fixed, the drift basically remains constant, it is neither increasing nor decreasing. If I come to the, the, the variances, the variances would be as we know, uh, it will basically for the first term as it is a fixed quantity, the variance would not be there and for the x fixed means a into delta t as per the simple concept of expected value and variance which we all know from statistics. While in the second term, we have the variance corresponding to epsilon is 1 and the other terms b and delta t being constant. So, it will be square root. So, b square would come and delta t uh, square root of that would be if you uh, square root and if you square it, it basically becomes delta t. So, as considering the, the, the values of capital T which is again as per the assumption is equal to uh, capital N into delta t, we can find out the expected value of the difference of x capital T and x naught is a t which is fixed and the variance would basically mean that it will be basically given by b square into t. So, again if I find out the drift and t is fixed, then the expected value also remains fixed and for the drift and the white noise factors coming, you can find out the variances of the differences also. These are the differences remember in the same way as we found out for this formula, in the same way we found out the expected value of z capital T minus z naught and variance of z capital T minus z naught. So, this is how the graphs would look like. This is a snapshot, it is not necessary that each and every instance we generate it will be coming like this. So, if I concentrate on these two parts, the two parts are the second term which is corresponding to the volatility or the white noise and the first term which is corresponding to the drift. So, drift is fixed which would be I will use the highlighted red color corresponding to uh, uh, the fact that I have highlighted in red in, in the equation. So, this would be the drift is increasing and if I consider the second term the this 
second term which is the corresponding to the white noise and which basically has an effect on the variances. So, if I if I find out the expected level and the variances, the graph as it is blue, I am not highlighting, I am just hovering the, the stylus over it. So, that bit would be basically be d z or delta z. And if I combine them, obviously, this equations, equation gives us the concept that we combine them. The combination graph is basically what is given here as highlighted is this one. So, you can have different ways of and, and each instance as you as you generate, you will have basically different values which will give you uh, delta x or t x corresponding to the generalized Wiener process. So, similarly, if I have a next instance when I generate, so this will be uh, the color is not exactly dark blue, but this will be d z. Again, if I generate, I am now using a hashed one or dotted one. These are snapshots of, of each instance which I take. So, this is also d z. And in the similar way, so this trend which is there would be remains fixed provided a uh, is fixed and delta t has already been decided it will be kept as small as possible. So, if I have the snapshot for the generalized winner, another realized values depending on the case 2 which was there are the, the continuous light blue color is it may be this and in the sec third instant if I use the, the dotted ones with orange for the case when I am trying to join, join, join um, make the generalized winner it will look like this where just for clarity, the dark orange one and the blue one, dark blue one correspond to each other for one instant. The bold light orange one would correspond to the light blue. So, they can be infinite ways. So, I am just highlighting and finally, the dotted yellow or orange one would basically correspond to the dotted blue. So, each snapshot would basically generate uh, examples. So, this consider two the 1, this is considered 2, third 1 is here and you can have uh, such examples accordingly. So, stock price starts at 40 and has a probability distribution of uh, given by normal uh, case of uh, uh, mean value 40 and the variance is 100 at the end of the year. So, if you assume the stock price is, is uh, Markov with no drift then uh, the process would be given that we are more interested to find out the change of the stock prices d s or delta s would be given because the average value of delta s would remain uh, fixed. That means, the changes are not happening and uh, the, the process would be a simple mark of 1 which will give us, so if you see this is uh, delta z which is the second part, second part being that uh, factor which give, gave us the concept of the white noise volatility. 
So, if the stock price was expected to, now we are bringing an, a, a new concept, if it was expected to grow at uh, 8 on an average. So, this 8 value is related to the, the so called change in the drift which was A. Now, another question which you will be asking is that from where did I get this 10 and if you see it in, in the slide 14, the variance is given by 100. So, obviously, based on that we can calculate and find out the value of B as 10. So, the second Buddha, so I just jumped and I thought I, I, I should ex explain that why this 10 is coming. So, this 10 value, if I remember what color did I use? I used uh, yellow for the second term and red for the first term. So, I will try to utilize the same uh, coloring scheme. So, continuity remains as we did for considering the different combinations of the options and the forwards. So, so this value 10 or the value which you have here is basically B, hope, hope you are able to see, if not let me change it to the highlighted one. So, this is B into the concept of delta z and that is equal to b into epsilon into square root of t which you have been considering. So, let me mark it with this is becoming very light. So, let me mark. So, this is basically b into delta z is equal to. So, I am just marking the so called outline in order to make you understand what the equation is, but the coloring remains the yellow to bring parity in, in how we have been trying to discuss, not from the concept point of view, but from the way that how the equations are related to each other, what, what comes where. Now, if the stock prices was expected to grow at 8 percent, so this 8 percent is the concept which will be coming or which will give you some idea of the continuous compounding interest rate and all these things. So, it was expected to grow by 8, 8 on an average during the year. So, in that year end the distributions would be, so initially it was 40, now it is basically 40 plus 8, 48 and we will consider the, the variance um, as it is given. So, in that case the process of the value of delta S, so delta S is basically the change in the stock price and uh, we had used the red color. So, this would be 8 into delta T. So, that is equal to A into delta T. So, that will give you the, the first term corresponding to the drift which you have. Now, let us move one step more. So, we will consider the Ito process, a type of a very uh, simple example of generalized Wiener process. So, first we consider Wiener process, then the generalized Wiener process and when we are discussing the generalized Wiener process, I did mention that A and B and I did highlight it that they are independent of X from where it is starting and T. In an Ito process, so, the Ito would basically be here. So, the Ito process, the drift, drift rate and the variance rates are functions of time. So, this I highlighted again and it is coming out very clearly. So, it will be dependent on both the value of, of x or the random variable. Uh, so, it is now dependent on x and t, x is the random variable. So, let us highlight that it is dependent, x is dependent. Similarly, it is dependent on time, let us highlight it is dependent on time. And similarly, the white noise or the volatility factor which was b into del delta z is 
now depend b vector is dependent on both x the random variable as well as time. So, the discrete equivalent, so that was the continuous case. So, if you remember few minutes back I did mention the, let me use the colored black. We did mention that the conceptual difference in finance we would not be going to much detail, at least in this course we would not be going to much detail. So, delta d del all these things would mean the same thing even though in statistical concept in in actual mathematical concept they are have different meanings so the discrete time equivalent would be given by delta x is two terms a i am not going to the dependence of x and t let us forget uh, for the time being so drift multiplied by the, the time difference plus uh, the concept of, of uh, volatility of the white noise coming, the factor multiplied by the delta z which is the Wiener process which is epsilon into delta t. So, for the discrete case, for the discrete case, And again, I am highlighting, even though it is absolutely clear to all of you, the factors of dependence are marked. So, this is these are t, not delta t, remember, because delta t we consider they are basically have the property that uh, they are infinitely small and they have been measured equally. So, x comes here t comes here, the, the dependence which I am showing for the, the continuous case and the discrete case. So, you may be thinking that how do we generate. So, you will basically have x naught which is the starting value and considering that initially a and b are independent, they would be given so you will, and delta t is finalized. So, you generate the winner process which is basically generate the standard normal deviated epsilon in the first instant, multiply the realized value with square root of delta t and multiply it by that b will give you the second term which is related to the white noise and multiply a into delta t which will give you the first term related to the drift. So, given x naught you add delta x to that. So, delta x can be negative or positive depending on the values of a which you have and the b which you have and also the value of epsilon. So, given a and x naught and delta x you can find out x 1. Then again you generate the second time, you get the second delta x, add it to x 1, get x 2 and proceed accordingly such that you are able to find out all the values of x. Why a generalized winner process is not appropriate for stocks? For a stock price, we can conjecture that it is expected that the percentage change in a short period of time remains constant, not its expected absolute change in a short period of time. Which means that in the short period of time which we are considering, um, the percentage change, expected percent change, change would remain constant. and not is expected absolute change. So, we are considering the percent change with respect to the absolute change and we can also conjecture or surmise or guess that our uncertainty as to the size of the future stock price movement is proportional to the initial value of the stock price. So, x naught would have a deciding factor that or s naught as we start would have a, have a, have a deciding factor uh, influence that what would be the stock price in future. So, now consider the Ito process for the stock price. So, in the same way, so as we have uh, this term, so if we basically um, break down uh, 
the concept of the mean value of the drift and the white noise which is the variability or volatility. So, we are considering uh, the factor that how the stock prices and the rate of change of the stock price would be decided. So, once you have x naught, s naught sorry not x naught, uh, you will basically find out that how does the rate of change of the stock price happen. So, the according to Ito process of stock prices, it is equal to the mean value mu and from where the mean value is coming, we will com come to that multiplied by s or s naught into delta t which is the time difference. As the time difference becomes smaller and smaller in the limiting sense, the actual value of s t which you have been discussing time and again in the option case, s t means the spot price or the stock price at capital time t is equal to capital T would be given by the the multiplicative uh, values of the following s naught into e to the power r t. So, if you basically are able to integrate, you can find out and in the limiting case, what um, uh, limiting case means in the differential in the concept of differential calculus um, utilizing that we can uh, analyze. I am not going to the proofs, this is not required. We can analyze that the value of, of the formula or the formula which you have been utilizing this one basically is coming from the concept of the Ito process and the assumptions which you have considered. But the question would immediately arise and all of you would be thinking, I am sure because you are paying attention here that there is a volatility. So, how do you incorporate? So, the, the term which we have ad added here uh, which is uh, mu into s into delta t is only related to the drift. So, but obviously volatility is there and I have been mentioning time and again volatility would be there, it is dependent, volatility means basically the concept of variance which is there, we, we will say that it is dependent on t and we can add them up and so on and so forth. So, the question is that how the volatility can be incorporated into the model. So, if we incorporate this second term will come which is related to the B term if you remember the white noise that is actually the standard deviation factor which is related to the returns of the stock which we have. So, if I find out the values of delta s and then find out the rate of change, the rate of rate of change which we have, it will have two terms, I will use the same coloring scheme. The second term which is coming from the fact of the Wenner process. So, this formula which you see yourself where which I am highlighting on and discussing is uh, like the generalized Wiener process which we have. And obviously, we will we will assume initially that the sigma is independent from where, where it is starting and starting means from where the stock price mark price is starting and also independent of time even though in the last slide it was mentioned that the volatility would depend from at what price you are starting to measure. Lower the price, higher the price would have a cascading or, or such effect in the volatility in, in, in the future. And the first term which was related to the drift which for which we will use the red color. So, it is equal to mu which is the factor which we have. Uh, like A would basically give us the drift. So, but obviously here on the left hand side it should be remembered that it is not delta x or delta s, is it is delta s by s the value of the stock price at present from where we are measuring. So, if you want to find out delta s you take capital S onto the right hand side and multiply it accordingly. So, here actually the, the, the formula when we, when we convert and find it out. So, 
when we utilize this, this d s is equal to mu into s into d t plus sigma into s into d z. So, in this formula, if you see the factor of a and b and this will become very evident why I have been mentioning it depends on x depends on t. t has not been highlighted here, but x has been x is basically the, the stock price which is s here. So, the actual value of a is this if you bring the time factor obviously, it will become much more evident much more clear. And similarly, if I have considered the term b, it is sigma into s. So, a and b are have been uh, made a little bit clear that what a and b corresponding to the drift and the volatility mean. So, this model is sometimes known as the geometric Brownian motion based on which the stock prices are, are considered. So, the discrete version again becomes very simple, uh, because the, uh, another thing which, which I did mention in the last class, but um, let us highlight, I, I was more uh, inclined to discuss that why the concept of, of delta d or del were, were not being considered in this concept of finance. Obviously, in, in hardcore quantitative finance, we do consider that, but uh, here I am trying to keep it as basic as possible. I have ignored the differences between del, delta and d. Another point which uh, was mentioned, if you remember that in the discussion of the stochastic processes, the variable and the, the, the the time can can take uh, total combinations can be four discrete discrete so the first discrete word i am using is for the time and second is for the variable so it's discrete 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 uh, continuous then continuous discrete and finally is continuous continuous and for our analysis we say that we'll consider the continuous continuous case because it will be easier for us to explain and and do the problems and explanation so, that is why the discrete version would be del s into in divided by s multiplied by mu into del t plus sigma epsilon into square root of del t. So, where del s would basically be or delta s would be the time difference, the stock prices time difference uh, happening at t 1 and t 2. So, as that the difference between t 1 and t 2 is delta t, which I have been highlighting time and again. So, mu is the expected rate of return per unit time. Note for delta t small, we assume mu to be constant and that is why we have been assuming that is the based on the fact that is the continuous compound interest rate based and, and for many of the problems we consider the risk free interest rate to be constant even though it is not in practical sense because we are taking the time difference very small. Sigma is the volatility of the stock. Note that for very small delta t, again this sigma can be constant. And obviously, with repetition I am saying, the epsilon would be a standard normal deviate with mean 0 and uh, the variance of 1. So, with this, uh, they would definitely before starting the class, um, uh, we thought we will be able to cover the black schultz, but do not worry, I will come back to the discussion the black shoots and the assumptions later in the in, in the next lecture have a nice day and thank you for your attention and stay well thank you